Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Project. In this module, I'm going to have a look at how to manage resources. So first of all, I'm on the resource sheet and I'm going to create some resources. So simply type in the name of the resource or the appointment. It's totally up to you how you can do that. You get more information or there's more details available if you use people's names because then you can have a personal calendar, etc. If you use the appointment, then that could be anybody. And you might have 10 people as a engineer, for example, and then you get less uh, facilities for that resource. Now you've got this option over on the right here, um, group. So instead of um, putting engineer there, you could put engineer there or trainer there. So I'll do that. And then you can run reports and filter on this at a later date if you've actually filled this in and I'll just put a couple of things in there and then we'll just have one more person and he can be admin support so what you have is a different type so that's the resource name and then you have three types so you've got work which is the default option material and cost so i'll do one of each of these in a minute so let's say we've got some computers and microsoft office licenses and paper and then we want a hotel as a resource as well so in terms of a computer that is a material you don't want to leave it on work because it would be used or treated as a person potentially so I'm going to put that as material Microsoft Office uh, paper or material and then the hotel is going to be a cost resource now when you get uh, material you have a material label column so I could put there this is what will appear on the Gantt chart Microsoft Office and pack and let's put pack for that i'm not going to put those in a group now you can see on the on the people on the work resources you get this maximum of 100 percent. but you could also have if i put contractors uh, as a work resource you could also put that to 300 percent or something like that which would mean that there's three contractors now standard rate for each of these i'm going to put at 10 pound an hour and overtime rate at 15 pound an hour and if they're all the same which is highly unlikely you can highlight them and pull them down like you can in excel i'll put these on at 10 pound an hour they're not getting overtime because of contractors now the computer cost let's say that every time you use a computer on a task it's going to cost you 50 pound um, Microsoft Office, every time you use a license, it's going to cost you £25 because you've got a book agreement. Um, paper, it's going to cost £1 every time you use a pack of paper. Now, this fixed cost, um, you could leave that on zero, for example, and put a fixed cost for these contractors of £500. So, if you add a contractor to a task, it's going to cost um, 500 pounds whether you use one contractor or 10 so you wouldn't really be bothered about how many contractors you've got in there now they're all prorated but you can change this so the cost goes at the start or the end of the project they're all using the standard calendar but again you've got different calendars and you can create um, calendars specifically for a resource so they don't get over allocated now, when you've typed your resource list out, you can double click into them. So I'll double click into Bob and then you can adjust their availability, for example. So at the moment he's available. But if I say he's not available until the 24th, that means that's when he can start and thereafter is available. That will then have an impact if you allocate Bob to a task. Working time. You can change working time. So you've got work weeks and details. So let's say Bob um, only works till 
12 o'clock on a Friday. So you can change that setting, which is the default setting and just delete this block off. Okay. And again, that will have an impact if you allocate him on a Friday for an eight hour job, it will move over onto Monday. Exceptions is where you can put holidays. So um, let's put summer holiday for Bob. Um, he can go on holiday on the 1st of June till the 14th of June. So he's again, if you allocate him over that period, he'll come up as over allocated. You can see his calendar is blocked off there. And if you click on the Friday, it also tells you the times that he works on Fridays as opposed to Thursday. You can click OK to that. And then you've got the cost tables where you may have a standard rate, which is the same rate that I've just typed on there. You can see is zero is not available um, until Monday. This works like this. So let's say on the 7th of June, well, let's go for the 21st of June because he's on leave. He's going to go up to £12 an hour. And if he does overtime, it will be £17 an hour. And then that's only going to be for a week because perhaps he's in a particular dangerous place and he gets an extra couple of pounds for working there. Or it's a dangerous job. So he goes back down to his normal rate on the 28th when he's due back. Now you've got quite a lot of roles here, look. And then you've got all these other tabs that you can fill in as well with the same sort of information on. And I'll show you where you reallocate these tabs. So what these can be used for, in addition to what I've just done there, is if you buy in bulk, you might get a cheaper rate. So like paper, a pack, one pack of paper is, is one pound, but if you buy a thousand packs, they're at 20p, things like that, if only. On the notes tab, these are notes for Bob as a resource. So what I suggest people do here is put the um, job specification for Bob in here as an embedded document. And you can do that from this option, insert object, create from file, browse for the file. So I'm just going to pick a random file. The first one I've come up with. Um, I don't even know what these are. If you link that, it will be updated, a constantly updated file. But if it's if it's a signed document, you probably don't need to link that. So you just click OK. I'm going to display it as an icon, actually, and then click OK. So there you get that. It's a video link. Um, I'm not going to open it. And then because you've got it as an icon, you could uh, do another one. Just move that down. Try to move that down. And then do it up there. So I'll just put video because what you need is a little title. Just go and get that again. Browse. And icon. Okay. So what you want is space to have uh, multiple icons. There it is. So let's say, um, spec and then I'll do another one and this time I'll pick a, a PDF file or you can create a new one if it's something new that you want as a um, a document to type in display okay and then you can see by having these as icons you can quickly see what they are if you have them expanded you have to scroll right down to the bottom of the first one to get to the next one, which is not great. So that's the notes area. The custom fields would list any custom fields that you'd created um, by just right clicking and going into custom fields and, and converting one of the text fields to a column or whatever. And then they would appear here. So I haven't done that, so there, there aren't any. But if I click OK to that, that is how you edit um, a resource or your manager resource and then to if I go into the Gantt chart we've got all these tasks that are complete I'll just knock them off complete for this little example so they're all not complete you've got the ability to add resources from 
this little drop down in the resource column or you can double click into the task and go onto the resource tab and add resources from this drop down or the one I prefer is you go to the resource tab on the ribbon and assign resources through this box. The reason I like this box is because this just floats on the screen and you can see when you click on these tasks that this is changing. So whichever one you click on, you're not needing to open and close things or move down. You just need to just click on the task you want. So if I assign Bob to that, he's gone red. Why has he gone red? If I go back to the resource sheet, he's gone red there. Look, if I double click in on the general tab, it's because it's not available until the 25th and it's only the 21st. So that would now need to be changed because he can't do that. So I'll take Bob off that one, remove, and I'll put Anne on that one. And then Anne is assigned. Now I'm going to assign a computer. So the computer is going to cost me £50. If I give her two computers, or give the task two computers, it's going to go up to £100 because I'll assign Bill. And we need some paper. I'll assign paper. And if you're going to use paper throughout the day, you can do this. So let's say we think we're going to use one pack per hour. You can just type one forward slash HR and then that should go up to eight pounds. Um, it's 16 pounds, actually. So that's how you do a. Res uh, not a resource, a material, I uh, use material. So you just put this forward slash on there. Now, the hotel, when we was on the resource sheet, you've got a hotel as a cost field. Now, there's nothing in the cost field. You can't actually put any money in this. Where you'd put the money is when you actually allocate the hotel. So if I click back onto that one, and assign the hotel this is where you would put the cost in so there's two of them so let's say it's 200 pound so there you've got 200 pound cost for the hotel now if i change this table view to the cost view you can see the impact of this so this is going to cost me 636 pounds I've already saved a baseline previously, so that's why this information's there, but just ignore that for this. Now, if I complete this task, it says it's 630. So if I just go to tasks and just complete this task, it still says there's 200 remaining because that is that hotel spend. So personally, I don't like the way it does this. I would rather put that 200 pound as a fixed cost in this column. So if I remove this task, let me just show you what I mean. So I don't like the fact that it still says I've got £200 to spend when this task is complete, which is not, not good and not correct. So if I remove that, now it's saying there's no money to be spent. And if I put this back to zero, so it's gone back to 436, and then I put that £200 hotel spend there as a fixed cost, watch what happens now when I put it to 100%. There's nothing left, it's spent it. So to me, that is a bit of a mistake with regards to these cost fields. But it shows it, but it doesn't spend it when you do your complete task and it just shows it has been remaining, which is not great because um, it gives you a false impression that there's still money to be spent. So I'll just put this table back to the entry table. So we've added those resources on there. Now, if I add the contractors, let's just add the contractors, assign. That's cost me £500 for the contractors to that task because it's a fixed cost. So if I change that to 200, that's now gone up to 1,000 and then 300, it's gone up to 1,500. So every time I assign the contractors, it's costing me £500. And we've only got three contractors, and if I put them to four, we get them over allocated. 
So I'll pull that back down to three. Now, this is slightly a, a misleading thing I'm doing here. So normally you would just have contractors on a fixed contract and you just assign them like so, and that's the cost. If they bring 10 men, that's their problem. Um, if they bring one man, that's also their problem or their, and their choice. You don't pay normally extra for extra contractors. So that's how you assign resources and that's how you create resources. So the main area you do that on is on the resource sheet and you can then edit any of this information if you so wish. Once you've allocated a resource, you can change, if I just double click into Bob, on the costs tab, I said you've got these B, C, D, etc. extra cost tabs. You can change which um, tab that you want project to look at and you don't do it here. So you just, I'll just need to, I'll just put something in this one. So I'll put 20 pound an hour, something stupid. So from the 1st of July, goes on to 20 pound an hour and there's no other time because that's a lot of money. Click OK. And then what you need to do now is go into the resource usage or task usage view. Double click on Bob. And this is where you can, you can see it's looking at the cost rate table A. And then you can select cost rate table B, which is what you want to go for, for Bob. He's not, he's, not, he's not on this task at the minute because he's not available. But if he was available and it was the 20th, past the 21st of June, he would be on £20 an hour. So that's how you allocate the different cost tables. Simply go into the resource usage or task usage, double click on the resource and then adjust the cost table through that. So that's all I want to talk about in this little session on managing resources. So hopefully that was of use to you and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for your time.